Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Ajaz Ahmed and we'll discuss the recent meeting with the two president of the Koreas. Ajaz, the discussions that have happened between the two Korean presidents, uh, President Kim and President Moon, do you think this would actually mean a new uh, correlation of forces in the Koreas? And does it mean that the United States is no longer the key player in these discussions? Well, it certainly will start a new uh, process, uh, I believe. It's, uh, uh, <clears throat> I think there are many aspects of it that uh, um, are actually not being discussed in public mo most of the time. Uh, it is a new step towards a much more comprehensive political, economic cooperation between the two parts of Korea and increasing integration between them. Yes, they the, talked about the, the Korean nation and the integration, etc. Et that's right. That's right. It's, this is very interesting that in all the talks around and in the communique itself, they talk constantly of Koreans, the whole nation, national reconciliation, etc. You know, so this is, you know, th this is a process that became visible to the rest of the world uh, during the Olympics when, you know, Winter Olympics when uh, the two teams walked under one flag and so on and so forth. But now it is part of the declaration that this is a process for a long-term reconciliation and unification. So far as the U.S. is concerned, um, probably just the size of the U U.S. and the historic role that it has played in the region still is, is very important. They are talking very interestingly, uh, the communique envisions a tripartite meeting between the two Koreas and the United States. And possibly a quadrilateral one. With China, which is, you know, going back to the Korean War, the reason why China has to be there uh, and all that. But I think what happened is that the U.S. did not quite recognize the process that had been going on in Korea uh, and what its implications were that President Moon had been elected at a time when the previous government had been discredited massively because of its corruptions, this, that, and the other. So he came in with a remarkable degree of authority uh, and he could ignore that the opposition and carry on with the policies that he has long believed in. Um, and the policy that he is pursuing is, in fact, two-pronged. One is the old one for a bilateral uh, relationship with North Korea leading eventually to denuclearization, demilitarization, unification, and so on and so forth. But also the integration of the two Koreas in the newly emerging economic, um, uh, you know, relationships in the world, basically with China and Russia. So that in September, actually, both the Koreas had gone to Vladivostok, where, where the South Koreans had talked about seven bridges of various sorts. You know, South Korea is the fifth largest exporting economy in the world. So it has to find ways to get integrated into that. And for one thing, this new plan for the Trans-Korean Railway that will connect the Korean Railway with the uh, Trans-Siberian um, Railway, et cetera, et cetera, is part of what is envisioned for the future in terms of economic integration of the two um, the, uh, 
Mr. Putin has been talking about um, Russian gas pipelines coming through the two Koreas and, go, and supplying uh, Russian gas to Japan, etc. Et this is a much bigger economic project of integration of the region, which will involve the economic integration of South Korea, uh, of the two Koreas, and an independent initiative, independent of the United States, so far as the initiative is concerned. My sense is that the pace of it has been partly, um, and the pace of uh, what, what has happened more recently, uh, has been affected by the great belligerence that Trump had been showing recently. Uh, you know, partly because he is just prone to, to bluster, partly because he his presidency is collapsing inside the country and therefore he want to be belligerent somewhere else, strikes against Syria, threatening to, um, to you know, uh, to bring down the... Uh, the, to, to withdraw from the the deal with Iran and then all this bluster about North Korea will do this, that, and the other. And the communique very directly says, we have agreed that there shall never be a war again. Now, here is the two questions I have for you on this. Yeah. One is the fact that the American strategist shall be say and what we call the crazies last time, who have now termed themselves as uh, neocons, or what we are terming them as neocons. They have been saying, if we need to sacrifice South Korea, so be it, in order to stop North Koreans' ability to strike the United States. Now, that if for a South Korean is obviously going to be of great concern. Sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice for US strategic interests. The second part of it, and this is something that I really think that we should also look at is South Korea has actually still a status of being a half colony of the United States. Military, militarily, the U.S. is stationed there. It controls its army. Officially, South Korean army is still controlled by the United States. So is it unlike North Korea, which is no longer under, shall we say, direct control of if it ever was. Independent part of Korea. Yeah. So yes. this is the only independent part of Korea. So in that sense, the reunification is also a removal of occupation from South Korea. Well, that is part of what is what the uh, the communique seems to be implying, and uh, some remarks of Kim uh, and Moon, both of them on the sides that are being reported. You know. I mean, if you read the implications of it, we should, you know, the, the, the thing of denuclearized Korea, uh, demilitarized for peace and so on and so forth, it is simply not possible unless Americans withdraw their troops. When they do, new, I mean, Americans will have to withdraw their nuclear assets from the region as a whole, including Japan. And the nuclearization, everything, it's, everybody thinks it's about South, about North Korea, it is not. South Korea has a very extensive nuclear program. So does Japan. And Americans have nuclear assets in the region. 30,000 troops in Korea, 35, whatever it is. Some 40,000 in Japan. So it's a major military presence. You cannot have peace without the withdrawal of all of that. I think what is basically being done is to start this process of negotiation, shout American belligerence, we will do this, we'll do that, et cetera, et cetera. To build towards this process of trilateral and quadrilateral and then six um, involved and, and so on. As it goes on, the economic integration, I think, is going to grow apace. 
So it's a combination of various issues. I think what North Koreans have also understood is that they have to gain enormously by becoming a part of this. And some kind of arrangement can be reached for a period of time when they coexist as separate countries, but increasingly integrate their external economies and so on and so forth. The two sides have their own systems, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and become a part of that much larger. Um, so I think the the Russians that the, Putin said that you can have you know diplomatic uh, pressure sanctions is diplomatic pressure but anything more than that is uh, a step towards war and suicide uh, etc so uh, so i think what is going on is the process of economic integration of the region in which americans again do not realize that as a great as an economic power they are on the decline South Korea is the fifth largest exporting economy in the world. These decisions are being made between Russia and China and South Korea. And North Korea seems to have decided to join the game rather than the degree of isolation in which it has lived. And whatever uh, they do in terms of their you know, uh, closing this site or that site or something, it'll be very slow. And they're under the Chinese, um, you know, security umbrella anyway. So, um, you, you know, so um, I think Americans are really, really caught. And it's the, it's the South and South Korean and North Korean understanding reached in conjunction with Russia and China that has changed the game. So you, how do you read the upcoming Trump and Kim's uh, summit? Do you think no, there is much? I would love to be a fly on the on the wall. <laughs> do you think Trump will declare victory uh, that his bluster has worked? That's why North Korea has come and uh, to the table and give agreed to denuclearize and uh, declare victory and go home. <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> that is how the American media is playing it already. They're, they were so stunned by all this that for two or three days, there was really no coverage. And then it started with this, how Trump's pressure has worked and uh, brought Kim to the negotiating table and um, et cetera, et cetera. And the South Koreans are such smooth, uh, you know, they're <laughs> diplomats. They are giving Americans the credit, you know, um, and so on. And um, whether or not Kim will also have that sort of sophistication, I don't know. He was educated in, 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 in Swiss schools and so on, so I'm quite sure. <laughs> and he's a Korean anyway, so um, he may have just as much sophistication as Moon does. Uh, but um, that's how the game is going to be played. They will save uh, Trump's face. The good East Asians, they know how to <laughs> you know, save other people's face in order to carry on with what you, they need to do. So, Yaz, last word on this. So, this is indeed a breakthrough in the world for peace. It's, 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 I, I think it's a great breakthrough. It's a great breakthrough. And it's astonishing. It's astonishing um, how rapidly it has come. It has taken about six months of at least from what we, what is, what has been visible to us uh, in terms of, you know, international conferences, this, that, and the other, that we can watch. Um, six months or so of this sort of thing, uh, and suddenly a breakthrough of this order. Uh, the process is going to be very long, 
you know, there is no, this is a very, very complicated issue. And American pride and power are involved in this on a very, very great scale. Uh, it's a question of how quickly Japan is willing to accept all this. My fear is that Japan is right now ruled by such a very right-wing chauvinist um, uh, <clears throat> dispensation that they may not, you know, facilitate the process as much as that. They, they may be very obstructive. They can play the spoiler as yeah. much as possible. They, yeah, they, they can be. They can play the spoilers, but I, but I think that will only slow down the process of, you know, really military de-escalation de and things of that sort. Uh, there is no, you know, peace treaty with the U.S. in the works, and unless there is a peace treaty with the U.S., there can't be really a peace treaty between the two Koreas. They, they can have, you know real peace agreements and all kinds of peace and so on. So in that sense, that process is going to be slow and it is hazardous, but I think it creates the opportunity for normalization in the real life of the two Koreas. Thank you very much, Ajaz, for being with us. We'll come back to you on this and other international issues, as well as issues uh, of shall we say, India, Pakistan, China, United States, and so on. Yes, yes, indeed, 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 yes. Thank you very much, yeah. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and do visit our website.